Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this really awesome rig in Blender 2.83. So you can see this is what it does. We can just grab one bone, move it, and it'll make the wheel rotate. Um, you can pretty much use this for any kind of rotating object. Um, just keep in mind, before we go any further, I'm not showing how to make the wheel, I'm not showing the lighting, the scene, and everything. This is just a rigging tutorial, so go ahead, get yourself a wheel, make one, model something, get one on blend swap. There's a lot of free materials out there. Um, if you do want this specific scene, I am going to be making it available in the description below, so you can check out how I did everything, how I set up the constraints and the parenting, and you can also have the wheel as well. So that's going to be in the description below for a dollar on Gumroad. Check that out. Um, so let's get into the tutorial, and I'll show you guys how it all works. Okay, so with a wheel of your choice opened up in Blender 2.83, what we're going to do is make sure you select whatever the object is and make sure the pivot point is in the center. So when we do eventually add our bone and we rotate the wheel and it's following the rotation, we don't have too much an offset. Now, that being said, I did actually offset the pivot point on my wheel just a little bit deliberately. So when you rotate it, you can see this little bit of wobble. And the reason I did that, because in real life, no wheel sits 100% perfectly on the on the bearing, you can always see a little bit of inconsistency when you watch a wheel, especially on like a bigger car or something. So I've just added that in for a little bit of realism, but have it as close to the center as possible. That's very important. With that done, what you can do is select that object, go Shift A, I'm um, sorry, Shift S, and then go cursor to active. So that our 3D cursor, which is by default in the middle of our scene, pops over into the middle of whatever object we're going to be rigging. So when we add our first bone, it's going to be placed right in the center of our wheel. So with that being said, I'm going to go Shift A. We're going to go down and just add an armature. And you can see here a single bone has been added. And to make things a little bit easier for us so we can see what we're doing, just go over to your object properties here. Go down to viewport display and then just enable in front. If you go under this tab, open that up. There's an option called in front. Just select that. So now it doesn't matter where we're looking from, we can always see the armature, it's being prioritized in our viewport. So now let's grab our armature here, let's go to our edit mode, this is gonna be real simple, real quick. I'm just gonna grab this knob up here, G, Z, bring it down to about here. Then with this guy selected and my cursor still where it is, we're gonna go here to our um, transform pivot point, we're gonna make it 3D cursor. So when we rotate, it's only gonna be rotating around that 3D cursor for now. So with that done, go Shift D R X 9 0. What we've done is Shift duplicated it and rotated it 90 degrees on its local X. And then what we're going to do is grab this guy here and we're going to go Shift D, but this time we're going to go R Y minus 9 0. So it's been duplicated and rotated over here. With that done, just grab this guy G Y uh, G X and move it forward. So you can see this is our X axis and we've just moved it forward. Then we're gonna grab this guy here, Shift D, Z, and move it up. This is gonna be our main control bone. So what we do now, let's just go back to our, um, back to this option here, and we're gonna make it median point, which is what it was originally. Go to your front orthographic view, just R minus nine zero, hit enter. Doesn't matter where you really place this because it's just our main control bone that everything is gonna be parented to. So what we can do now is start getting into our parenting. Okay, so our parenting is pretty straightforward. What we wanna do is select this bone here first, holding a shift, select this guy. Then we're gonna go control P and go to keep offset. Then we're gonna grab this guy and holding a shift, select this guy, and then still holding a shift, select this guy last, and then go control P and keep offset. So we have this guy parented to this guy and both these guys parented to the main controller here. So what we can also do is just go ahead, select all of these by hitting A. Then we're gonna hit F3 on our um, keyboard and we're gonna just type in here, recalculate. So just type in recalculate and you see here it says recalculate roll. Click on that and we wanna to go to global Z axis. So once we've done that, now all the global axes are pointing up to Z. Now we can get into our constraints, which is pretty easy as well. Okay, so the constraints on this are pretty straightforward. What we need to do is, first of all, make sure we're in pose mode, because currently we're in edit mode. So go over here to pose mode, and we're gonna start by selecting this bone here, and then holding in shift, selecting this bone here. So this order is very important. This one first, and then secondly, this one. Once you've done that, go control shift C, you're gonna get this panel pop up, and we're gonna go down to transformation. So give this a transformation constraint. You can now see that this bone 
is a different color. And if you go here to your constraints tab, your bone constraints, you'll see it right here. Click on that and you're gonna see we have the transformation um, constraint now added. And I'm gonna show you some basic things we can do here. So first of all, just make sure you enable the interpolate. And what we're gonna look at first is our source. So the source here is this bone here. So when this bone moves a certain amount on the min and the max, it's gonna cause an action to occur here on the rotation. We'll get into that in a second. So first of all, make sure this source is set to location, which it is by default. We're gonna come here to our min, and this value can vary depending on what you, um, the scale and size of your scene. But based on the scale and size of my scene, I think about six or seven meters is gonna work. So I'm gonna do six on the min, and on the max, I'm gonna do negative six. So type in minus and six and hit enter. So you can see we have these two values here. What we're gonna do is go down to our destination. And what we wanna have happen here is when this moves on the location a certain amount on either the negative or the maximum, it needs to um, transfer it over and cause a rotation to happen. So over here, the, re the destination, we want the reaction to be a rotation. So enable the rotation. And if we come down here and we come to our min value here on the Y, 360, hit enter and we come down here to our max and we make it negative 360, hit enter. And we come here to our world space. We, we want to change it from world space to local with parent. And we wanna to come to this one here and we wanna make it local space. So what's gonna happen now, if this bone moves through 3D space, if I grab it here, G, X, and I move it, I can see that this bone now is rotating. This one that we added the constraint to. So with these settings here, this should work quite well. Like I said, if the scale in your scene is a little bit different, you can come here and decrease or increase these scales over here. But that's all we're gonna be doing with our constraints. It's pretty straightforward. And because we've parented everything properly, if we now grab this guy, all we have to do in the future is just move this guy around and we can see that this is now going to rotate this bone down here. So our rig is working. All we now have to simply do is parent our wheel to this bone here. So what we're gonna do is just go out into object mode, select the object we wanna parent to the rig. So I'm gonna just grab this guy here, because that is our wheel, everything's parented to that. With that active, I'm gonna hold in shift and select my rig. Then with that done, I'm gonna go into pose mode again and just select this guy. You can see it's already selected anyway. Not this one, this guy. And then we're gonna go control P and we're gonna set the parent to bone. So if we grab our main controller now, this is the magic part, go G, X, and just move it. And we can now see our wheel rotating. So if I go into the front view, G, X, and I move it, we can see the wheel is rotating. And at the moment, that scale looks right. It doesn't seem to be slipping. And like I mentioned earlier, if things don't quite add up because of the scale of your scene, you can come in here and mess around with the scales over here. But for this sort of scene, it should work. So I hope you guys found this useful. Once again, like I said in the intro, I'm gonna be making this file available on Patreon for a dollar, that's an Australian dollar. Uh, so you guys can check this out, see how I set it up, and you also get the free model wheel as well, which you can use for whatever. So thank you for watching. Like my video, subscribe, check out some other content. I really love seeing what you guys do and interacting with you guys. So have a good week, I'll see you guys later.